Okay, so let's have a go um, and try to create this style of writing. So this is like a handwriting that's been converted to typography. It's actually quite simple, it's very, very fast as well. And it will be unique to you because it's based on your own style of writing, your own kind of signature. And then it, your signature then is converted to something that looks a bit more professional, a bit more um, creative. Now you can add lots of extra things to it as well. So if you want to, for example, um, go into this emotive uh, word design so where you might add some type of color because it's might represent you a little bit more around the letters then you can add little things again it could be something to, to do with you something that you like and enjoy and um, you can also then eventually get into some kind of color so what I would recommend is that you would do some kind of chaotic work outside leaving the inside of the letter very very clean so ultra white also strongly recommended to do a really well drawn black sharpie line around the letter and that's going to be quite slow to do but uh, i'd strongly recommend it the alternative would be so what i'm suggesting first is to do chaos outside and clean inside so you have a tension between the two you could just do this if you wanted so leaving the outside plane and then inside you're going to do some uh, type of work there another little option there to make your letters 3d but it's, it's getting a little bit complicated at that stage so the process that we're going to use here, you should have paper and pencil uh, or even a marker or biro, whatever. It could be copy page as well. It doesn't have to be this kind of clean page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write just A, B, C, D, E, F and I'm going to do it nice and fast in a rapid manner and you can do your own way of doing that as well. But it has to be joined writing. It has, has to be connected and flowing basically at one stage. So here I go. Try that first so you can pause the video if you want here the next part then is to thicken up some parts now generally speaking we don't thicken up the parts that go across the page need to stay thin the parts that go up so for example this here needs to become thick so thick and thin and also we need to taper so if you can see the way it slowly fades into this small thin part here that's where this becomes very elegant and actually quite interesting is that little taper, the gradual change from thick to thin. So I'm going to do this just separate here. I'm going to do like just a simple letter O, for example. So remember the parts that go across are going to be thin. So here and here is going to be thin and here and here are going to be thick. So this is why I'm going to uh, use this circle method. So from here, I'm going to be slowly fading down to thin. Again, slowly fading to thin there. And then the same goes for over here. So thin to thick, thick to thin, something like that. Okay, so um, let's have a look then at how we will produce it on this. So the first thing I'm gonna get you to do is in the middle of each letter is I'm gonna get you to draw a circle on something that goes up. So in this case, the A, now we're gonna start with something, uh, an exception to the rule. We are gonna leave this thin here and we are gonna thicken that later on. So the B, I'm going to draw a circle. Now these circles that I'm drawing should all be the same. You would eventually get, be able to rub them out. So uh, maybe you're not drawing them too heavy. A, B, C, D should have two. E, one, two, and F probably just one. So again, you can pause the video here and catch up there if you want. Next step then is to convert those upward bars or parts, upward parts of the letter uh, to the thick. Now we already know how thick because we've just drawn the same kind of circle over and over again. So with the A in particular here, I'm going to start with the thick part and just thicken that up. Now at the top and the bottom, you need to decide, do I go for wide and kind of straight or do you just taper it off maybe? It's up to you, but you need to do something similar in each letter. Just for this one, I'm going to go for a quite thick bar at the top. But here I'm going to fade into uh, this curve here. So I will need to gradually fade that in. The B. So again, I'm going to copy the, what I've decided on my first letter. So a square top coming down to my thick. And in this case, it just ends straight here. So there's not much going on there. This next little part here is going to be a bit more tricky. Again, starting with the thick part. And I'm eventually going to taper it in, fading it into that there and there. And that, again, looks quite interesting there. The C, same kind of process there. So starting at the thick, gradually tapering into thin. And I'm just going to keep going on. You can obviously pause this wherever you want.
my next step then will be to work this now this is only a practice one so we're not really going to do much more to it than what we have here your finished piece yes you are going to get a sharpie marker you're going to put some, put some work outside it uh, be it paint work or in this case I took some chalk just rub my finger on, on the chalk stick and then just apply some chalk to the paper there don't ever put chalk directly onto the page but you can use paint or marker or something like that so markers like these for example kind of cheap markers and um, what you can do with those is leave a mark down and f add water to that and um, literally just water and a paintbrush and that will fade out I've done some work with it over here so that marker has bled onto the page and it actually turns into an ink especially if you have a double line so there's enough material there for me that I can just add water to it and then it'll fade out you could even just use your fingertip for that so if you want to dip your finger into some water lay down some water there the marker will naturally over a few minutes bleed into that wet part so that's an option for you as well. Colour pencil will work fine, chalk, paint, whatever you have really. Once you've completed your name eventually in the future, and um, this is just a practice one again, um, you're going to probably use a A2 piece of paper, so and fold it. So that's the large page folded in half, which creates this long uh, rectangle here. Now maybe that's not enough. My name is reasonably short. I've got, what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters there, 10 including the space. If you've got a lot more than that, then you might think then to just use a full A2 page and do your first name here and your second name down here. And then perhaps you're gonna be cutting this into some sort of a bubble like that. So you might not fold an A2 page, maybe you need the, the full one. The other thing to consider is the type of paper. This is just fairly regular drawing paper and it's not very, very thick. So when I cut that out, it's going to warp and fold and flap. Um, so I would strongly suggest that you'd use some kind of card type paper. So something like this here, it has some strength. You can see it hold it like that and it's not really moving too much. Um, so it's reasonably strong. I could just put a piece of tape on that and hang it. You could pierce some holes, put some string on it and then hang it on something maybe if you want. Um, uh, you could just do it on both ends or just blue tack it down or whatever. The sellotape is not a very nice looking thing so you might consider doing something behind it that will attach it um, but sellotape is, is fine as well. I've added these little bits here that might help me to stick later on so uh, when I cut that out I still left those on. Um, so that would be something like mine. Now the banner that you do around it, again totally optional. You could just go for basically straight, maybe something like that, and then stick that onto your desk. Or you could go for this bubble type thing. Now what I'm trying to do here is focus on this amount of space. This is negative space here, and I'm trying to focus to get that about the same. So in my case it's about the thickness of a thumb, and that should be echoed all the way around the shape there. So that's a kind of a bubble type. So over here, if I was to try to produce that, so again, I'm looking at this space here. If you wanted to draw circles, you could. Um, so I'm really looking at the negative space, the spaces between my marker and the actual letters. And then that could be cut out into a chunk or into a banner or whatever you want.